Hello and welcome to today's training industry product demo, Construct Impactful Learning Journeys by Simplifying Complex Topics into an Engaging Modality, sponsored by Hemsley Fraser. I'm Avery Vogt, Event Coordinator at Training Industry, and I'm so happy you could join us. Before we get started, I would like to quickly go over a few housekeeping items to help you interact with our speakers and get the most out of today's program. Throughout today's event, please feel free to chat comments into the chat window and submit your questions in the Q&A window. We will address all comments and questions throughout the event or at the end of the program during our Q&A section. I have enabled closed captions for this event. You may select to turn them on or off by locating the closed caption icon in your toolbar. We encourage you to share the information you received today with your colleagues and network via social media. Please follow at Hemsley Frazier and hashtag TI webinars so we're able to track your contribution to the conversation. When the event ends, you'll receive a short evaluation survey and we would greatly welcome your feedback. As always, today's webinar will be recorded and archived on trainingindustry.com and you will be receiving a follow-up email from us that will include a link to the on-demand program for you to share with your team. If this is your first webinar with us, a special welcome goes out to you. At Training Industry, we offer over 100 webinars each year on some of L&D's hottest topics. We cover just about every topic relevant to leaders of training organizations around the globe. And if you've attended one of the programs in the past, thank you so much for joining us again. Now to get started, let me introduce you to today's speakers from Hemsley Frazier, Ian Klein, and Danielle Baldwin. Ian Klein is an accomplished learning and development professional with, with over 20 years of experience in designing and delivering global leadership programs, managing L&D departments, and driving organizational development across multiple industries. As Senior Vice President, Head of Solution Architecture at Hemsley Fraser Group, Ian partners with organizations of all sizes to help them develop and deliver engaging live, virtual, digital, and blended learning programs that help employees get ready for the challenges they face today and in the future. Danielle Baldwin excels as a learning and development professional, bringing 13 years of consulting experience, unlocking client potential through strong business partnering, problem solving, and helping to bring solutions to life. As head of client experience sales, Danielle has a proven record with supporting organizations in the business services, insurance, and financial services to enable transformative learning that drives performance, real behavior change, and strategic alignment. Ian and Danielle, the floor is yours. Thank you so much, Avery. First of all, I'd like to thank uh, Training Industry for the opportunity, and I'd like to welcome everyone who's joined this webinar today. We hope you find it very valuable and interesting. Today, we're going to talk about how we use a modality we call fluid books at Hemsley Fraser to really simplify complex topics into very easily understandable um, bits of information that are easy for people to engage with and get everything they need to know. The primary use of many of our fluid books is in describing learning journeys, and we'll explain more about what a learning journey is, just the way we use that term. But as you'll see, fluid books can be used to really um, make simple and make engaging any type of complex information. We're going to have quite a few examples to share with you. If we go to the next slide, I'd just like to go over a little tiny bit about Hemsley Fraser, just about one minute. We are a global learning organization with offices um, in the United Kingdom, United States, Canada, Germany, and France, and associates in our network all over the world. I'm not going to read the slide uh, word for word to you, but we basically can do everything from coming up with learning strategy, developing content, or you can use our tremendous library of existing learning content. We're expert at delivering uh, workshops live or virtual all over the world. We have an amazing learning experience platform. And as you see here, we run the gamut of all different learning services. But um, we're very excited to be here today to focus on the topic of fluid books and fluid books with learning journeys. Let's look, if we go to the next slide, at our table of contents and our agenda for today. First, we're gonna talk about something that I'm sure everyone has experienced, which is the competing demands for our learners' attention. And focusing on this for just a few minutes will really help us set the stage for why it's important to describe learning journeys in such an engaging manner. 
Well, again, as I mentioned, what we'll do is we'll, we'll look about how we use the term in the definition of learning journey and why it's important to have a learning journey guide to get people invested in all of your blended learning solutions. Then I'll pass it over to uh, Danny again, and she'll introduce what a fluid book is, and we'll show a few samples of how we use fluid books to really create those exciting learning journey guides. We'll look at other use cases for fluid books, and there are several, and then we'll open it up to Q&A by about 10 minutes before the hour, we hope. Uh, after that, we'll tell you what happens next, because we have an exciting leave behind for you today. So let's go to the next slides. And Danny, why don't you talk about something I'm sure we're all familiar with, which is those competing demands for learner attention. Brilliant. Thank you, Ian. And delighted to be here today, everybody. So quite right, as Ian mentioned, it's competitive. We're competing for attention of our learners, of our team members, of our employees. Um, unsurprisingly, you will see we've categorized a couple of hot topics that we're seeing, not just within our client portfolios, globally, and of course, within our own enterprise today. So feel free to input in the chat if we've missed anything. I think it's fair to say, post COVID, the world has changed, our businesses have changed. We're interacting more virtually, we're working hybrid from home. And we're dependent on interactions, mainly on screen in a virtual environment. So lots and lots of meetings, keeping us all very, very busy. The knock-on effect, of course, we're seeing more and more digital fatigue um, when we're talking to our employees within the organisation. And the knock-on effects, burnout as well. Let's not forget when we're talking about um, the attention of our learners and our employees, we've also got professional networks that we're competing against as well. So depending on the organization that might show up as Yammer or Teams, it might be LinkedIn Learning. And then of course, we've got our own personal distractions. So for instance, today I've taken off my Apple Watch so I can be totally present for you here today. And let's not forget, We've all got a day job to do. Most enterprises experiencing large change initiatives at the moment, whether that be mergers or acquisitions, whether that be introducing new performance management systems and KPIs. So how do we cut through that noise? We believe at Hemsley Fraser, you need to apply a, a, a mindset to learning. It's about a, a learning mindset. It's about a marketing mindset. Our approach to learning, I'm going to just throw over to Ian, who's going to just walk you through our point of view. Thank you very much, Danny. So the 4E approach is how Hemsley Fraser really grabs the attention of our learners, puts them in, as Danny said, that right mindset for learning, and then make sure that they're ready to learn and that after they learn, they're able to embed what they've learned. So again, you see here, it's called the 4E learning methodology. We really are, as Danny said, really thinking of ourselves as marketers because we have to cut through all of that noise of any other marketing messages, competing IMs and emails, demands on our time, and quite going up to and including uh, our managers wanting us to focus on our day jobs. How can we capture our learners' attention? Well, the first thing we really have to do is excite them, both the learners and the stakeholders. In order to create bandwidth for learning, we need to make sure that our managers are going to allow us to learn. So we have to explain to them why the learning is important, why we should allow, they should allow their employees time off the desk. And then with all of the marketing ads and the fun websites that are available and YouTube playing in the background and Netflix playing in the background, how do we get learners attention? So we have to excite them about the value of the training as well making all of our messages beautifully designed, very, very active language written in a way that captures the attention as much as the newest episode of um, The House of the Dragon will capture everyone's attention on Netflix or HBO. Once we've excited both the stakeholders and the learners, we have to give them learning experiences that are really engaging. If we prime people to learn, get them ready to learn, and all they're faced with is a bunch of PowerPoint slides with an unending number of bullets, we're gonna lose their attention, they aren't going to learn. So the second part of our methodology is to make sure that whether we're talking about online self-study 
or in-person workshops or live workshops, that they are engaging, they are uh, graphically pleasing, that they um, allow people who have different learning styles to get what they need, visual, auditory, kinesthetic, all the different learning styles are, are, um, are integrated into that learning. But we all know learning isn't one moment in time and the real proof in the pudding is if people take what they've learned and they then apply it on the day to day. That's where the embed phase of our methodology comes in. So what are we going to do to make sure that learners, once they learn new skills, apply those skills? There are a variety of ways you'll see in a minute. Finally, we've all experienced building a wonderful learning program that, that really ticks all the boxes and beyond that engages the hearts and minds of our learners. And it's great for the first year and it's okay for the second year. And by about the third or fourth year, it seems to be falling out of touch, isn't this fresh? So how do we keep evolving the programs so they are always, always up to date and relevant? If we go to the next slide now, briefly, I just wanna show you all of the different pieces of the learning programs uh, that we might launch may have. So of course, in the Excite phase, they're all, all that stakeholder messaging. We might have socialization events for our stakeholders so they understand the value of the learning. We might send out really creative teasers about the upcoming training to our learners. And of course, invitations and reminders about the training. Once we engage with them, give them the learning, we have a variety of different modalities that we can use to actually provide the upskilling. And how do we then support the learning so that the learners can embed what they've learned? Well, again, any number of modalities are available, including the ones you see here. While not directly relevant to the learners, of course, there are a number of different evolve uh, actions we can take, including content and process refreshes, as well as looking at the modality to make sure that we're keeping up with the times. Of course, in March, 2020, the modalities had quite a lot of uh, live in-person uh, events going on, but March 2020 overnight, a lot of that went right to virtual. So before we move to the next slide, let's hold here for a minute. Our learning programs have any number of different pieces to them, and we've got to make sure that our learners know the flow of the program from start to finish, how to access the different pieces of content, the different learning interventions, the different workshops, where they can see the self-study resources, where they will get their on-the-job support. And now if we go to the next slide, the problem and the challenge is on the left side of the screen, we call it an architecture. You may call it something else, but typically learning professionals will translate all those different pieces, all those different modalities and nuggets and communications into what you see here on the left slide, which is a learning architecture. It may be in terms of a flow chart. It may be in terms of a project plan. And I'm sure you've all seen things that look somewhat like this. But if we really think about it, this type of document is not formatted for our learners. It's formatted for learning professionals. And for someone who is not immersed in the language of L&D, it may be very, very hard to understand the learning timeline, uh, the flow of the program. It also doesn't really talk about the benefits to a learner, why I should take time out of my busy day to attend the training or my busy month or months to attend the training. This type of document is really for us. So the answer in winning the hearts and minds of our learners is not to show with them or not to share with them rather a learning architecture or a flow chart or a project plan, but we need to come up with something that's almost like a brochure or something very customer facing like a really interactive electronic magazine that is formatted for them that looks beautiful, that speaks the language, not of a trainer, but of a learner, that highlights all the benefits of the learning and in one single place gives them access to all the messaging they need, all of the content they need, and serves as an ongoing reminder that if I ever have any questions about the learning or wonder what's next or wonder why I should care, I have something that I can understand right in my hands, whether I'm at my desk, waiting for a bus, or just in my apartment, having a question wondering, hmm, what happens next week with the learning? 
We have a wonderful modality at Hemsley Fraser called a fluid book that does all of this and more. And with that, let's go to the next slide. And Danielle will talk about what is a fluid book and what are the many ways we can use it. Thank you, Ian. And absolutely, Wolf, I am going to demonstrate exactly what a fluid book is. Um, what I wanted just to share with you in, in very much layman's terms, um, it's an interactive, you might call it an ebook, you might call it a playbook, but it's a real unique way where we can combine multiple ways of learning and package up, just as Ian mentioned there, assets and um, instruction as part of a blended learning solution. Accessible on any toolkit, um, sorry, accessible on any desktop or mobile, so any device, but also completely customizable. So we will look at some customized examples as well as some Hemsley Fraser off the shelf content as well. Fluid book, I would describe as a really great toolkit, but also a way to humanize communication. So thinking about again, applying that marketing mindset to learning. So let's, let's dig in. I'm gonna share my screen with you and share with you a live example. So if you could just give me a nod so that we you can see my screen there, that'd be great. Perfect. Thank you, Ian. So welcome to um, the Continental Fluid Book. So firstly, you can see here that it's been beautifully designed and will be very, very unique in terms of branding to the Continental organization. So the main problem that we were fixing with Continental, they came to us with a demand management leadership program for their shop floor individuals and managers that typically would work in a manufacturing organization so the ask we have to make the joining instructions modernize we have to bring to life the learning experience and ensure they have everything they need to support them throughout this modular program so if we just have a, a quick flick through you can see here that we've put together a number of interactive icons. So really to think about catering for all different learning preference. So throughout the journey, I can think as a learner, I can go and do an activity in preparation for module one. There might be a specific read it article that I, that I can access as well as completing some activities. Why I particularly like the Continental Fluid Book as well is they asked us to put in some additional features here to enable learners to share peer-to-peer. -peer. So thinking about what other mechanics within the organization really, really work for them as, as we think about building a peer-to-peer -peer network throughout the program. If I just flick through a second, you can see as well that we're really thinking about using not just the instructional design and the words on the paper, but thinking about movement and illustration. So making it very, very easy for the learner to, to remember and making it much more friendly and interesting than just a normal email that might drop in their inbox with a, a call to action for module one. You can see here, um, if we just go on to page seven, I'm very, very clear from a learner's perspective what's expected of me. Over the course of um, the duration of the program, I'm going to be attending three modules. Module one consists of four sessions, and I've also got my, my, my time frames there as well. We've also added in this beautiful animation so we can get as creative as our clients enable and allow us to, especially bringing in, in line some of the governance around branding and marketing, of course, as well. Let's not forget we're always in pursuit of organization goals. So again, anchoring everything to the organizational values. You can see here that there's different pop-ups. So if I'm in the flow of, of work and I need to think about the next module and I need to reinforce, okay, what is that value trust? How does that show up? I can quite quickly remind myself as well. The final page I'll show you in regards to the Conti story as well, I, I think it, it is really good, is module one, session one. So throughout this actual toolkit, each module is broken down. So pre-course, as Ian des descri described it, the excite phase. So in preparation for, for module one, I'm expected to bring a team photo. Um, so it's very, very clear as part of that pre-course requisite. I've also got a question to think about. So again, I'm preparing myself. It's very, very clear on, on what's expected of me. 
In terms to other features as well, um, I can click here, which will point me back into to a system. So anything that's kind of mandatory that I need to complete, very, very user friendly and accessible. And I'll also have some interactive quizzes as well, potentially asking me questions. So this can actually link right back into the trainer in preparation for module one. So very, very clear and everything's in one place. So I'm going to stop there a second and I'm going to throw back over to Ian, who's got some additional learning journey examples to show you. Thank you so much, Danny. Okay, and I'm going to share the next example. And Danny, would you tell me if you can see that one? I can see it. Perfect. Excellent. This is a fluid book we created for a company called UBM, an events company, which is now part of Informa. And UBM was launching their first ever joined up first frontline management training program for anyone from rising managers to about VP level. And they used a fluid book to not only introduce the program, but also as with Continental, describe the learning journey that their learners would take. This is an example where Hemsley Fraser was allowed to really engage our, our creative uh, creative juices and creative minds. I think it's a, just a, one of the one of the prettier fluid books that, I, that I've ever seen. Although, of course, as Danny said, we can edit the, the look and feel of a fluid book to be whatever, whatever you want. Immediately, we have a, uh, a launch note from the CEO indicating to the learners and to the rest of the senior management that this training is important. This journey is important. We want you to follow it. So we immediately bring in that stakeholder engagement. If I go over to pages six and seven, you'll see again, as Danny mentioned, we're taking not only the words, but also the graphic design and the animation, welcoming people to what it means to be a manager at UBM. And a big part of the learning journey here was UBM launched a series of what they called the management behaviors in eight different themes. Again, using these customized pop-ups, we can uh, allow the learners to explore those different team, uh, those different themes, reward and recognition, communication, et cetera. But what's more exciting and more pertinent is we talked about the use of a fluid book to allow learners to gather all the necessary resources in one place. Here we're actually showing the management behaviors. And if you go ahead and click on this link, it would actually open up that downloadable management behaviors guide right there in the fluid book. Moving on, we introduced the program, which was called MAP, the Manager Acceleration Program, and talks about all the different things that are included in the programs. If I go ahead then and jump, you can see a list of the different topics that are included in the programs. All 16 of these topics had online self-study. About half of them, when the program launched, also had live or virtual workshops. So we're not only giving people the permission to learn from the CEO, we're telling them the importance of being a manager, we're showing them the behaviors they're expected to follow, but we're now describing the learning journey that they would follow. Moving forward, we also had, as part of this program, uh, using the Hemsley Fraser Learning Experience Platform, the Hub, we created a portal, which again is accessible through this platform, uh, through this fluid book, for people to access all the sign up links and their online self study. And we described the different experiences. So we realized the context of people at UBM going through this program would, would be different. There would be people who had people management experience before, but were new to the company. There would be people brand new to people management and people who are already in place at UBM as a people manager. So we made sure to give them three different paths, like a choose your own adventure book. If I click on, I am new to people management, it jumps you right to the, space, right to the page in the fluid book that describes the way you will go through, you will go through MAP. It also then, will show you um, a series of additional steps you can take to um, make the most out of your experience through this program uh, with links where appropriate. Uh, again, just beautiful, simple, really, really commercially focused. And that's what I wanted to show you on this fluid book. Here's another example of a fluid book. You may have heard of Amgen, the world's largest uh, independent biopharmaceutical company. They, want us, they wanted us to use a fluid book to help them launch their new 
DI and B, Diversity, Inclusion, and Belonging initiative called You Belong Behaviors That Matter. Again, a very different look and feel for Amgen. It was important that while, the, while there was some creativity, we were really sticking to their standard corporate branding. The Amgen Fluid Book, of course, like uh, many others, will have that same table of contents where you can just go to the parts you need. But of course, it's more themed to You Belong and to Amgen. And Amgen wanted to highlight their commitment to diversity, inclusion, and belonging, and make it clear to all staff all the different things they've been doing to really create higher levels of DIB throughout the organization. The next thing I want to highlight here is the introduction of the concept of you belong. Amgen felt very strong. They didn't want their learning journey to be a standard one. To them, raising the level of DINB wouldn't be asking or requiring people to go through 90-minute workshops about how do you make sure you're encouraging diversity? How do you make sure you're not focusing uh, or you're not inadvertently uh, exhibiting unconscious bias. They felt very strongly that people wouldn't want to go through a traditional program. We worked with a globally recognized diversity leader named Jackie Handy, and together Amden and Jackie helped identify 12 behaviors that if a company and the people within that company demonstrated those behaviors on a regular basis, those behaviors themselves would saturate throughout the organization and create enhanced levels of diversity, inclusion, and belonging. Those 12 be key behaviors are called the behaviors that matter, and that is what You Belong is attempting to raise. So just like the continental example you'll see here, we're using a very creative animation to not only show the behaviors, but also allow people to look at the behaviors and see what they are and begin before they're even trained to understand what these behaviors are. And the way that we are going ahead and launching the behaviors is every couple of months, there is a sprint of launching throughout Amgen different animations, infographics, um, learning handouts, videos, electronic flip cards, even fluid books that really show people how to understand each of the behaviors and show them how to live it in their daily lives. So next, let me show you. Included in this fluid book, you'll see what is asked of every learner. Sometimes we find that in, in large learning programs, people don't know what they're supposed to do. We make it very clear. Be on the lookout, check out the playlists, reflect, discuss, practice, and keep the discussion going. Next, we're giving you direct access to the learning. If you want to see the You Belong, uh, the, all the You Belong resources, we have that available on our hub. Some behaviors were already halfway through this learning journey with Amgen since launching in 2020. So the first seven behaviors have launched. You can go right to the playlist with all the self-study resources. The next ones, of course, haven't been launched yet, so they're not live. We can actually, as an admin team and as a learning team, edit and change this whenever we want. And finally, here's where you can go to learn more. So it's not just this program that we want to drive people to but there are also so many different existing learning resources at Amgen, we can link to those right away. What I'd like to do now is, is um, go back to the slide deck. So Sam, if you wouldn't mind showing the slide deck, we've now shown you just three examples of fluid books that are used to describe and share learning journeys. But that is just the beginning of what we're able to do with fluid books. Sam's getting up the slide deck there, I believe, and is going to go ahead and share that again. If Sam's not available to, I can do it myself. So give me one moment here, everybody, and I will share that. Danny, do we have uh, Sam back or no? We do, and I can see it straight into the, the quick, quick fire. fire okay. Perfect. We've now been showing you, thank you, Sam. We've now been showing you all those fluid books we, about learning journeys. We hope they've excited you. But eh, let's stop by, by showing what we care about. Now it's time to see what you care about. So Danny, mm -hmm. take it away. We'll do our first quick fire round. 
Brilliant. And we're in for some audience participation, please. So thank you, Avery. So we can go in a couple of directions. We're going to look at some Hemsley Fraser off the shelf content. Would your preference be to look at our accountability fluid book or our growth mindset fluid book? So if you could input your answers, that would be fantastic. For time purposes, what I'm going to do is just spend a couple of minutes um, showcasing the preference and giving you a little bit of a, a point of view on the Hemsley Fraser off the shelf content. And then we're going to dig into a couple more quick fire rounds. And look at some um, customer examples. Awesome. I'm going to go ahead and share these results. It looks like growth mindset is the winner. Great. Sam will be pleased. That was his guess. So let's go growth. A hot topic right now. So um, I'm going to share my screen. If you can give me a thumbs up there, Ian, or come with mute. Can, can you guys see? Yeah. Perfect. So um, what are you what you are viewing currently is the Hemsley Fraser core library of content. So you can actually see that we have multiple languages available in multiple um, subject areas. So these four buckets, I'm not going to steal Ian's limelight. We're going to have a quick look at growth and then we can look at maybe some of the other assets that we have available. Typically, the off the shelf content is actually available um, to, for, for clients such as yourself to host on your LMS system or talent management system, which has been designed to either stand alone. So as a learner, as a consumer and actually as a manager who, who looks after a small team, I can access in the flow of work some really great toolkits to help me facilitate conversations with my team. Each month we have a new topic, which is um, expertly designed by our design consortium. I'm just going to make that a little bit larger for you. Typically, all of our off the shelf fluid books, and there are around 100 to pick and mix from, you can jump in and out at the point of need, which is really, really handy as we are all super busy people. And as we mentioned, there's a lot of distractions out there at the moment. Typically, all of our off the shelf um, fluid books also um, have these interactive icons. So the watch it video, read it again, article and try it would be an activity. There's also some additional call to actions as well through through some of our, our fluid books, which might incorporate maybe a podcast as well and some kind of activity sheets. If we flick through. You, you, again, you can see that we've got some movement on the page here as well. What I particularly like with this particular fluid book, in preparation for a team meeting, I have nudged this out to my, to my team just to, 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 to get them in the right mindset as we, we're going into maybe a new conversation to launch a new, new product, for instance. We can actually do a self-assessment here. So really, really useful to remind me, am I fixed today or am I actually leading with a growth mindset? And we've also incorporated um, thought leadership in here as well, as, as you can see. So Ka Carol Dweck, just ensuring that everything's aligned and that we're, we're being very, very clear on um, the rationale behind some of the content within the, the fluid books. Some of our off the shelf um, fluid books also have um, quizzes built in as well. So we can do knowledge tests. And what this means as well is that in the self-directed way, I can really understand how I'm shifting the needle, how I'm consuming that information. And if I need to actually revisit some of those particular topics. I'm going to stop sharing there. And if we can go back to the slides there, please, Sam. And just while Sam's doing that, I'll just add, we, we have literally over a hundred of these that can be um, purchased or subscribed to as is or customized to, to meet your branding, to change content, whatever you like. And I think we're back to the poll now. Thank you, Avery. So I've got two customer examples queued up for you. Would you like to have a look at career development or a toolkit? Give everyone just Perfect. a moment here to fill out their response and I will share these results. Thank you. This looks like a pretty close, but career development is the winner. Perfect. Okay. So let me just queue up 
um, the next example, I'm just going to share my screen here. Um, here we go. Perfect. Brilliant. So QBE insurance, so financial organisation insurance, very unique problem. Um, I don't think it was actually that unique um, in the sense that a very, very traditional learning culture. They're really, really committed to talent agility within the organisation. So really thinking about how they can empower and enable all colleagues at a global level, as well as managers to have great career conversations, so two-way conversation. We have facilitated live expert-led sessions through two lenses, through the manager's perspective to make sure they have all the, the tools and skills practice that they require but equally through the um, all colleague, the, the individual perspective as well, so they can understand the process and understand what's expected of them. What we did, um, what we then did is to supplement those interactive sessions. QBE were really, really deliberate in wanting to provide a consistent approach globally for their career development conversations. So we hung our hat on squiggly career and we've packaged up all the resources that would be required for both the leader, the manager of that conversation and the individual. So again, taking them through and giving them all the handrails that are, that's required to ensure that that conversation is super, super valuable. So you can see here, I can dig in and, and, and dig out um, depending where I am as part of that process. We've got a stakeholder video here Again, really um, bringing to life and humanising some of the rationale behind why we're embarking on this in the first place, which is super important. This watch it video will also take you again back to the squiggly career, which is the main framework. So as a learner, if I have forgotten that framework, if I forgot the, the ethos, um, and the approach um, and why we're using the squiggly career within a QBE specifically, I have that, that quick reminder that I can consume in video content. You can see that we've packaged up again, different tools and resources here. So you can do a mindset check and actually these quizzes actually feed straight back into their LMS system as well. So I can see completion rates and I can see if, um, if my team are being compliant and actually where they are in that, that process. The look and feel, we were able to have a little bit more fun and get a little bit more kind of creative with QBE. So they wanted something really kind of memorable. Um, and again, we've used quite a lot of pop-ups here as well. We do also point to a lot of process throughout this um, development um, fluid book as well to ensure that it links back into their performance management system and that the paperwork can, can be completed as well. So everything comes together in one handy um, fluid book friendly toolkit. I'm gonna to stop sharing there. And if we could go back to the slides there, please, Sam. Brilliant. So we are now on the final round. So let's think about talent, upskilling our talent um, for retention and also acquiring new talent. So onboarding. Perfect. I think the poll's coming through, Avery, is it? Yeah, we'll give everyone just one more minute here. Um, let us know which one you would like to explore. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and share that. It looks like onboarding was the winner brilliant it is one of my favorites so i'm really pleased passion <laughs> of mine well. is it perfect so you will recognize this brand and again we were able to have quite a lot of fun can everybody see my screen mm -hmm. perfect i think yeah Great. So we were able to incorporate um, animation on the landing page, which was really, really important to Heineken. Um, and again, have real kind of free creative reign when it comes to branding. So really leaning into a well-known brand. Very, very similar to some of the other examples. I can dip in and dip out um, at that point of need. And this toolkit was very much developed as part of their onboarding um, new starters in particular those that were about to pursue um, the Brewer Masters um, programme. 
we have packaged up lots of different resources within Heineken. They have a um, a learning culture where they really, really enjoy podcasts. So there's a lot of videos. There's a lot of podcasts. There's also a lot of visual aids where they're able to actually download um, infographics as well. So great how to guides um, and cheat sheets, if, if you will, as well. The reason I, why I like this fluid book so much, you can see the, the podcast here that I was re referring to. So if you're if you're a learner like me that really is able to consume learning by listening, um, really, really helpful if you're a dyslexic thinker. Um, so you can actually listen and stop to the information at your own pace in your own time. Um, that's why I particularly like this this fluid book, but also we were able to have some fun. So uh, a little bit of element of gamification. So for a new starter, I can very, very quickly see um have I, have I actually retained any of that information or, or not sorry about that just click there and then I can check my answers as well so I think I need to work a little bit harder I might need to revisit some of that information um I'm going to stop sharing there because I am a little bit conscious of time I don't know if you wanted to go back to the the slides there Sam Uh, we are going to answer everyone's questions in just a minute, and there are some great questions coming through, so definitely keep them coming. But we did want to point out that fluid books are just one of the many creative capabilities that Hemsley Fraser has. In addition to expert-led workshops, visual, uh, virtual, in-person, even hybrid, we have any number of multimedia design capabilities, infographics, videos, podcasts, quizzes, flip cards, which are really, really fun, and a whole bunch of variety of both standard and customized assets. When you think Hemsley Fraser, think, please think, we know how to activate learners and, and get stakeholder buy-in and then really make the learning experience a joy from start to finish. But focusing one more time before the questions back on fluid books, if we go to the next page, uh, something I didn't mention earlier but that I'll mention now is I not only work at Hemsley Fraser, but previously I was a client and I actually purchased a fluid book because I thought it was literally the most engaging way I could think of to communicate and bring resources together. Uh, it was measurable. You can track it. You can even uh, squirm wrap it, put it in any LMS you want. And finally, it's so easily deployable. And because it is cloud hosted, any change we make centrally is immediately available the next time someone looks at it. So it's just a truly fantastic way to simplify and make beautiful and make engaging the most complex of messages, the most complex of programs. We hope you feel the same way. Let's open it up to questions now. And uh, I'll ask Avery and Sam if we have any questions that are on deck. Hello. Well, thank you both for a great session. Um, we do have a bunch of questions coming through the chat in our Q&A window. Um, I'm going to go ahead and call some of those out. Um, Ian, I saw you were actively responding to a bunch in the chat as well, but do you want to share with the group how Fluid Books are SCORM compliant? Well, they, they are, yes, they, they are they are SCORM wrapped. I'm not, uh, offhand, I'm not sure which exact version, but they are SCORM wrapped, can be uploaded into any LMS you like. Among the things that we can do is you can, uh, if there are quizzes, keep track of the scores. If you're using a fluid book for learning, you can actually require people to answer certain things and put in stage gates and blocking gates so that people can't proceed to the next section until they, they've written that. Um, please, uh, we, we can provide you with contact information after if you want the technical details, but we have several uh, global clients right now that are doing exactly that. Great. Thank you so much. Oh, and there's, Dan there's Danny putting in SCORM 1.2 or SCORM 2014. Awesome. Um, we have a question from Jill. What is a sample cost for the development of a fluid book? Time, resources, do we purchase your services or buy the platform? Sure. The platform is proprietary to Hemsley Fraser. And so you would be purchasing our services to create a fluid book. Um, editing a fluid book that already exists may only take about 
a few weeks, but when you're building one from scratch or heavily customizing one, we would say from the moment you say go until the moment it can launch is between seven and eight weeks. Um, there's a very, very low price for actually licensing an existing fluid book, but if you wanted to heavily customize or create your own, plus or minus a few percent, but it starts around 17,500 uh, pounds or about $20,000. And that includes um, uh, multiple rounds of storyboarding, editing, design. Um, and again, it is a proprietary uh, tool, so you wouldn't be able to make changes yourself. But as I put in chat, it is incredibly easy for us to make text-based changes. Uh, more complex changes may take more time, but you'll find that we're amazingly responsive. Thank you, Ian. Um, Jill had another question here. Do you have a full-time graphics designer to make all these pretty images, or does the platform come with a library of images to use? Danny, why don't you take that one? Sure, thank you. Yes, Jill, we have a graphic design warehouse of qualified graphic designers that we can lean on as part of the service. So as part of the process of designing a food book, we would co-create that with you, storyboard, think about the look and feel, think about some of the maybe restrictions that your um, brands we, call, we don't like to call them the brand police, but we would work with you to see how much creativity we could do to make sure that we're, we're hitting the mark. Thank you What's so much. What's our next question? Yeah, we got a bunch of questions coming in here from Vivian. Is there a setting to make learners finish the interactions on the page before moving forward? How can we track learners' accountability? Danny, you want to take that one as well? I believe the answer is yes, but you have more to tell yes. than I do. Yeah, we, we've done this. Um, we've done this with Zurich, actually, where we've um, partnered with them to digitalize a lot of their compliant and technical content, um, which is mandatory. Um, so what we're able to do is put knowledge tests or, or, or um, you must complete this video, you must complete this test. And somehow, I don't know how, jiggery pokery behind the scenes, it talks back to the LMS so you can see exactly who's clicking on what and who's completing those particular compliant activities. And of course, then we can provide through the platform any number of reports that'll that'll show you the interactions and give you the scores and, and all of that fun stuff. Great. Uh, to Claudia's question, is this a software which one can populate oneself? No, it, it, it's not. It is a proprietary platform. I can promise incredible speed, flexibility, and responsiveness, but it is not something like Arise or Articulate that, that you could then uh, edit or change yourself. Great. Um, Patty has a question, and I think you touched on timing, but generally how long does it take from requ from requirement of gathering through like being ready to deploy? To be very comfortable, we usually like to say between seven and eight weeks. The reality is much of the time is not spent on your side or our side. Much of the time is spent on getting your senior stakeholders to approve the content that's going to get go out because the minute they see how beautiful this is, Everybody wants a page, everybody wants a voice. So we try to build in a couple of weeks of review time, but it's pretty fast from your side. It's pretty fast from our side. Great. Elizabeth is asking who hosts the content, the fluid books? Do you host it or do they? Danny? Yeah, either or. So some, some clients are actually looking for a library of content and we can do a asset transfer of our author shelf content and send you a URL link. Um, and it's the same with bespoke fluid books as well. Um, we can send that to you to host on your platform or equally, we have our own platform. So we have our own technology called the Hemsey Fraser Hub, which can be completely rebranded and reskinned as part of the service as well. Um, and with that, we package up a number of engagement services as well to ensure that you're maximizing any of the content that you're hosting on our, on our own technology. And then you might as well segue into the next question. Are there options to embed a fluid book on a web page instead of going through an LMS? And the answer is? The answer is yes. Please don't quiz me on how, but we can do that and we have done that. Uh, 
And then Claudia writes, are you able to maintain several language versions at the same time? Absolutely, yes. Hemsley Fraser, uh, on our LXP, we have uh, content in about 14, 15, 16 languages now at this point. Mm -hmm. So it is possible um, through our translation partners or through your own translation services, we can create and maintain fluid books in as many languages as you want. And we probably do. Mm -hmm. What other questions do we have, Avery? Um, does that look like that's the uh that's it yeah, it looks like that's the last one there let me see if we have any others um from before i see that there was some that you um answered in our q a panel so maybe we'll share them with the rest of the attendees in providing to internal employees is this in an email or sharepoint site or only on the hemsley fraser site it, yeah it can, oh go ahead danny yeah it can be either avery um so yeah, it, it can be either complete flexibility depending on where our clients are in terms of their digital journey. So some clients might need to host it and embed it on SharePoint. Others are a little bit more uh, advanced in their technology and they can host it on Fuse. Great, great. Um, um, someone just asked, oh yeah, and Ian, you responded, yeah. Is there a demo that they can play with? Well, this is a perfect segue. So while I continue, we'll open it up for a couple more questions. No one's ever gotten in trouble for ending a few minutes early and giving people back a, a few moments of time. But what we're going to do is, uh, I believe that tomorrow, Avery's going to follow up with an email that'll give you a link that will let you play with a couple of fluid books. In fact, Sam also is going to pop into the chat a link. So you'll be able to see uh, fluid books lives. There's the chat from Sam right now. So you can go ahead and play with that. You can see the fluid books both on desktop, laptops, and on mobile devices. I got to tell you, the most amazing thing is taking an iPad or an iPhone and just flipping through with your finger. It's really a lot of fun. Uh, I thought I saw another question come through. Yeah, we do have um, one just came through. Romel asked, what are some of the economic outcomes? How did your clients see a return on their investment? That is that is a great question. I'm sure everyone on this call knows how incredibly difficult it is to paint a direct line between investment and learning and hard quantifiable savings or um, increases in revenue. We have those same challenges that everyone else does. We hear, however, the most amazing qualitative feedback about how the fluid book really took a very complex launch, a launch that would have been ignored by many people and have really generated a lot of momentum and buzz. We have clients that purchase outright or that keep re-signing for a one year, two year, three year subscription to our fluid books. We have many clients who continually create fluid books. So I can't give you a quantitative, uh, sorry, a quantitative accounting, of the economic impact of a fluid book, but I can tell you quant qualitatively, our clients are thrilled. I, uh, Danny, feel free to prove me wrong, but I can't think I've ever heard of a client say, oh, I wish we hadn't done that. No, um, and, and quite right. I think quite the opposite. So the Zurich example that I mentioned, we've done 20 plus um, fluid books for, for, for just Zurich. Um, so what we find is once we've deployed, um, fluid book as a, a new modality it kind of is quite, quite inspiring so it's like how can you use it in on onboarding how can you use it in induction how can you bring process and policy to life could we have a, a HR handbook and you, you know and so on <laughs> well thank you so much to everyone who's joined and thank you so much to training industry for the opportunity again uh, Sam's provided a link that'll show you not only how to access a couple of fluid books to play with, but also how to contact us if you'd like more information. Uh, with that, let's, and again, thank you, Danny, for joining me and Sam. With that, let's turn it back to Avery to close us out. Awesome. Well, thank you, Danielle and Ian. This was a really, really great session, super informative and lots of kudos in the chat. Um, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up for us today. So, um, here, I'd like to invite you to some additional upcoming training industry webinars this month. You can register for these programs and watch past webinars now at www.trainingindustry.com. All training industry webinars are pre-qualified for a credit hour, SHRM, HRCI, ISPI, and CPM.
We have some additional resources for our learning leaders out there. What is CPTM? It is the Certified Professional and Training Management Program that assists you in developing core competencies that will empower you to manage the future training needs of your organization. You can participate in a virtual practicum from anywhere in the world. Find out more information at trainingindustry.com slash training. And of course, we would love for you to join us at one of our two training industry conference and expos. Our next event takes place in Raleigh, North Carolina this June. If you have attended TICE in the past, you know it is the perfect conference for making connections with other L&D professionals and gleaning actionable insights from your peers. Learn more or register now at TICE2023.com. One last reminder that an evaluation evaluation survey should have popped open in another tab in your browser, and we would greatly welcome your feedback. Thanks again to today's speakers, Ian Klein and Danielle Baldwin, and our sponsor, Hemsley Frazier. Thanks to all of you for your time and attention. From Training Industry, I'm Avery Vogt, and I hope you all have a great day.